Thanks for the Feedback, The Science and Art of Receiving Feedback Well by Douglas Stone and Sheila Heen of the Harvard Negotiation Project is a book dedicated to helping individuals understand and manage feedback they receive in their personal and professional lives. The authors argue that while many resources focus on how to give feedback effectively, it is equally important to focus on the receiving end since the response to feedback impacts learning and growth significantly. The book is divided into three main sections, each addressing a critical aspect of feedback, truth, relationship, and identity. These sections build upon each other to form a comprehensive framework for understanding feedback and developing skills to handle it constructively. One, truth triggers. The first part of the book examines truth triggers, which are set off when we perceive feedback as wrong or off base. The authors suggest that we should assess feedback for accuracy, separate appreciation, coaching, and evaluation, and learn to engage with the part of the feedback that may be right rather than dismiss it entirely. It's important to maintain a stance of curiosity and ask questions to clarify the giver's intentions and to glean useful insights even from flawed sources of feedback. Two, relationship triggers. These are triggered by the relationship between the giver and receiver of feedback. Emotions can run high when feedback comes from someone we don't get along with or someone who doesn't understand our situation. The book advises readers to consider the feedback independently of the giver when emotional entanglement makes it difficult to process. Understanding the state of the relationship can help decipher the feedback and its implications. 3. Identity Triggers This trigger relates to the story we tell about ourselves. Feedback can threaten our self-conception and provoke anxiety, particularly when it suggests a gap between who we think we are and how others perceive us. The authors describe the concept of baseline, our usual levels of competence and worth, and swing, how far we bounce back after receiving feedback, encouraging readers to develop resilience and negotiate feedback in a way that is consistent with their identity while remaining open to growth. The book proposes six tools for receiving feedback well. A. Separate the what from the who. This involves distinguishing the feedback about the task, the what, from feedback about the person, the who. Personalizing feedback can make it hard to see the issues objectively, so it's important to focus on the specifics rather than interpret it as an assessment of self-worth. B. Disentangle the issues. Complex feedback is often a mix of different issues. Breaking down feedback into different components makes it easier to address each one individually, making it more manageable and less overwhelming. C. Sort towards coaching. When possible, transform evaluative feedback into coaching feedback. While evaluation judges, coaching aims to help improve performance. Seeking out coaching feedback helps people learn and grow. D. Seek understanding. This involves asking questions to seek further clarifications and to engage in a dialogue about the feedback's content. Understanding someone's reasoning behind feedback can shed light on blind spots or different perspectives. E. Take responsibility for what you're hearing. Recognizing that feedback is often filtered through personal biases and experiences, recipients need to take ownership of their reactions and feelings towards feedback and consider how their interpretations and responses can be adjusted for a better outcome. F. Manage emotional triggers. Regulating emotional responses to feedback is crucial. It's important to find ways of managing strong emotions so they don't interfere with the ability to process and use feedback effectively. Feedback is, the authors conclude, not just about the receiver adopting the giver's perspective. It is a joint process where both parties know imperfect information and have different perspectives. Learning to manage one's reactions to feedback and finding value in it, even when imperfectly delivered, is essential for personal and professional development. The authors also stress the importance of a growth mindset, believing that abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. With a growth mindset, feedback becomes information to help us grow rather than evidence of fixed traits or failure. Finally, the book touches on feedback systems within organizations, noting that cultures which support transparent, regular feedback and cultivate skills to receive and use it are more productive and adaptive. The ultimate goal of feedback is improved mutual understanding to facilitate continuous growth and learning for all involved.
In sum, thanks for the feedback. Serves as a practical guide, encouraging us to reframe the way we perceive and respond to feedback, thereby empowering us to benefit more fully from this ubiquitous, if sometimes painful, source of personal development. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.